So, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Stefano Borini. I work for Unthought, and uh, I'm going to present you some work we've done uh, for uh, uh, a European project called Symphony, and uh, specifically uh, Symphony Remote, which is an application that we use to uh, access containerized uh, desktop and web application with a web browser. So, a brief introduction to Unthought. We are a global leader in scientific and uh, scientific software development in Python for over 15 years. Uh, we do software consulting, training. Uh, we do support, uh, uh, all focused on Python. We have more than 1 million user uh, downloads of our software products, a uh, good part of them open source. We have headquarters in uh, Austin, Texas, and we also have uh, uh, two offices, one in, uh, in the UK, in Cambridge, and one in Mumbai, in India. So uh, the Symphony project is, as I say, the European project, and it's about, this, uh, it's an acronym, it stands for Simulation Framework for Multiscale Phenomena in Micro and Nano Systems. It's uh, multi-scale, um, uh, basically fluid dynamics, and uh, uh, it, it, it has it's been, been long running. Uh, it's a three years project and it's already finished now. There is a follow-up uh, called FORCE. And the idea is that uh, um, they have to do this simulation, this fluid dynamic simulations. And uh, they have large data sets. Uh, they also have custom-made software. And uh, they don't want to have the problem of deploying this software on uh, the user's uh, machines. So researchers uh, that uh, have to access this computational, co uh, computational code and work collaboratively, mm, maybe kind of sit down together and analyze the data together. Uh, they have this very, very large data sets and they have to handle them efficiently um, and they want to be able to deploy, manage uh, this software and uh, uh, also the potential uh, existence of multiple projects that are unrelated and they want to have something that can be reused. So we deployed, we de uh, developed uh, Symphony Remote to address this requirement and what it is, is basically it's Jupyter Hub based and it's a web interface for running these Docker uh, containers. Uh, each container contains one specific application, uh, but uh, if it's a desktop application, you access it via NoVNC, but you can also have uh, web applications, so like Jupyter, for example. So the idea is that uh, with this approach, you move the application close to the data. You have a terabyte of data, uh, it stays on the remote server, and you move the application close to the data instead of having uh, the researcher uh, download this massive amount of, of data on their local computer. Uh, there is no user installation needed. Um, you just start your browser, uh, navigate, uh, log in, and uh, uh, use the application. Uh, the workflow becomes synchronous, uh, which means that if you have a long-running computation, of course, you uh, suspend your session, go home, uh, reopen it later, and you can share both data and application with other users. And of course, it can be useful for researchers, but not only for researchers. It can also be used for educators. For example, you have a class of 30 people. They have to use a specific software. Uh, you provide that software. They access it uh, without having to install it on each student computer. Um, of course, uh, high performance computing uh, uh, administrators and also evaluation and testing. For example, you have a beta product you want to give uh, preview to your customers and you basically deploy it and make it available to your customers uh, from the web. So I'm going to give you a demo. Uh, before that, I just want to uh, say the acknowledgement. Uh, so basically, as I said, it's an open source project. Uh, it is uh, built on top of Jupyter Hub and it's uh, uh, part of the FP7 framework. Uh, as I said, there is a follow up of this project, which is called Force. It's part of Horizon 2020. So I'm going to give you a demo, and um, what you have is basically a, a Jupyter Hub login, and you can, of course, log in with the user, and you get a list of uh, applications that we provided and we installed. Uh, right now there is one running, which is the file manager, but um, you can switch, of course, uh, among the ones that are available and of course you can start them and 
Now, what happens is that Docker starts an uh, image, uh, you get a container running, and this container provides your application. Of course, now the resolution is not particularly friendly, uh, but uh, this is a full application, it's a desktop application, and uh, um, uh, it's completely isolated. Uh, you can, of course, uh, well, uh, uh, close it. And uh, you can also, well, of course, you can switch between them. And you can also share the session with a shared secret URL. And you can give it to a collaborator of yours and then access it. So you can basically work together collaboratively uh, while you're maybe researchers, they tend to be localized on different uh, research institutions. So if you want to collaborate with someone, talk via Skype, you can work basically on the same virtual desktop. Um, of course, you also have Jupyter. And you have access to Jupyter. And of course, you can sign out. You sign in again. No, your application is still there. Uh, there is an administrative interface. So if you want to administer it, uh, you have access uh, to a set of statistics. Uh, you can also, for example, stop uh, some containers, or rogue containers, and you also see which user is using it. Uh, you can configure users, you can configure applications, and in particular, the association between a user and uh, an application, a specific application, which is called policies. Uh, there is one important thing is that if you stop a container and restart it, the application will be uh, completely um, uh, removed and the new one that you start will be completely fresh, which means that you have no state. And this is a, 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 a specific choice because we didn't have, we didn't want to have the problem of a researcher that uh, for whatever reason corrupts his uh, working environment and then needs assistance to do that. So every time he shuts down the application, he can uh, restart it afresh and it's guaranteed to work. Uh, the result is that, of course, nothing of what is created is uh, preserved unless you use a so-called workspace, which you can configure, and it's basically a shared directory. This shared directory is uh, preserved and it's accessible to all containers, so you can also move data from one container to another. Uh, of course, you can also mount some uh, specific hard drives. So, for example, if you have a large data set that you want to make uh, visible. And... Uh, Of course, you can start and stop uh, how many applications you want, and it's only limited by the basically the hardware that you have behind. And this concludes my talk. Um, uh, if you have any questions, I would be happy to uh, answer them. Thank you. Questions? Okay, then I think it's nearly time for lunch. Yes. <laughs> Let's uh, thank the speaker once more. Thank you. Oh, sorry.